Hello guys and welcome back to What The Devil. Uh, I'm back here with Yusuf and we're here for another episode, uh, a good mood episode. And make sure you check the podcast out on Spotify and Apple Music. But Yusuf, I mean, we're coming in here. We've got one free nil against Southampton in the Premier League. And then we've gone into the cup, which could have been a banana, uh, kind of a banana spit, uh, slip. Banana peel. Peel, yeah. yeah. And we came out with a 7-0 win. And I mean, that is going to be a confidence booster for a lot of players. Eric, 10 goals, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as, as well, that was kind of, that's kind of a thing that's been thrown at Ten Hag since he came. He, like, I mean, I know it's a League One team, but we've seen these teams come against United before, against Ten Hag and other managers and cause us problems, 2-0, 1-0, kind of boring games. At least it was a really it was a really fun result, a lot of goals. We, we played League One Charlton in his first season in the Cup. I remember, I think that was the game Maynou made his um, de- debut for yeah. us actually and we won 3-0. I mean, good win, but you're against League One Charlton, so <laughs> yeah. it's a pretty big like difference. I mean, granted, we played Championship Coventry last season and we know how that <laughs> went. So. Yeah, yeah. That, that close to losing, literally. But, yeah, I mean, speaking of individuals in this game, because, I mean, three players got braces. Uh, Bruno, Bruno came on and somehow got two assists. I think Ericsson got an assist. Rashford and Garnacho both got two goals and assists. Well, Garnacho got two assists. Yeah. Despite people... I, I mean, it's no problem if you go through this game and you win a routine 2-0 because you're through to the next round no matter what. But considering the recent problems with our players in front of goal, do you think that this is going to have a good impact on them? 100%. Players like Rashford? 100%. It's, it's that ruthlessness we've all kind of been waiting to see from Man United. Now, Eric Ten Hag, I asked him like this a lot. They had a lot of games where they would just score, 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 score. And that's really good for just building that momentum and establishing yourself as like a real force to be reckoned with. Now, I'm not saying we're going to go challenge for the league because we beat Barnsley. But it's games like this that give you that momentum and you think, well, we've put seven past them now, so next game we're, we're going to go and we're going to finish all our chances. Like Rashford was, bef- before the Southampton game, hadn't had a shot. Yeah. Then, you yeah. know, he scored. He was like, shooting from distance. He was taking plays on. The goals yesterday, that first goal, defeat, brilliant. So good. That was so good. That was, that was stuff he was doing in his first season. It really was. Under, uh, Ten, Hag. under Ten Hag. Yeah, yeah they did. Because obviously people will say that the opposition's lower, but you, you, with Rashford, it's weird. Like you can almost just see, like when, with when, his actions, with that little like cut inside and the way that he finished, it's just like okay, he's getting a little bit of confidence here. When, you can when, see when Rashford's on it, okay, you could put him up against someone at Power League, or you could put him up against the best <laughs> defender of all time. He will do the same thing no matter what. That's he's the craziest player ever, like that. Like he just when he's confident, he does things like. You, and you just know it's going to happen. Yeah. I remember um, under Solskjaer that 1-1 draw with Liverpool at Old Trafford where he just, like, he bodied Van Dijk. Yeah. Like, he, at that point, <laughs> yeah. Van Dijk had this, like, invincible status. Russia just came and straight up bodied him and then scored a few minutes later. Was that the one where ja- Dan James played it to him or was that a different yeah, game? Yeah, Dan James was the one who played it to him. <laughs> yeah. So we've not got Dylan on the podcast, but we're still talking about Dan James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, but, but, yeah, I mean, especially with Rashford, like, going on to, like, focusing on him, we're speaking about a confidence booster, and I mean, whether you like it or not, he probably is one of the biggest confidence, confidence players. players in United's team, and it's it's really weird. And I mean, hopefully this kind of moves him on to playing in good form. But then in the future, I also don't want a few bad games to then turn Thank into ten, fifteen. He, he he almost needs to have these confidence but like every player needs uh, if if you get two goals in a get in a random game against the league one side you're going to be more confident yeah. after it but does he need to not rely on that so much yeah a, l- a little bit um i mean i i said on the podcast that it was either last week or the week before I was saying how against southampton would he play in we were debating that and i said look the thing with rashford is right now he's one goal away from a run of form but how long do you justify playing yeah. him when he's out of form to try and get him into form. And I mean, look, he's, he's, he's got that goal against Southampton. You can see he looks like a different footballer now. Just from a, like that one goal, yeah, it's, it's one changed goal. him completely. And I, I think he will go on a run now. And I think that we need that because everyone was worried about this period. A lot of people asking, will Ten Hag survive? But I think now that Rashford's got that goal. And Ten Hag, you know what, all right? Credit to him, he has backed Rashford so much. He really has, I really think yeah. of, all the, of all the players 
uh, you know, Rashford's maybe had the most backing of anybody from Ten Hag. He's really like absolutely refused to give up on him. Even at point like last season where people were saying like, and there were talks about PSG or they were talking about will mm. he go? People saying get rid. Ten Hag just absolutely refuses to even entertain the idea of it. Like you can see how much he loves Rashford, but I think Rashford now is really gonna step up. Garnacho as well. Ahmad uh, has this season probably been our best performer. Yeah. So we've got options the in options, attack now. Especially because Garnacho can play on both sides as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, as well, I mean, Rashford did play centrally, but you, you a lot of players got rest, really. You, yeah. you look, Xerxes came on, Bruno came on, Kobe Mainu, thank God, he, he got 90 minutes of rest, yeah. which was perfect, really, because... I did know. I mean, I thought it as well, but against Southampton, he did look a little bit like leggy in moments. He's looked, he's and looked in a, in a, in a for a lot of the games. seasons, to be honest. Now, he got rest in that second England game in the international breaks. That's in his last three games of football for club and country, he's had two rests, yeah, basically. So yeah. that's, uh, and I think he needs that. We do have, like I've said it many times, we have to remember he is 19. Oh, yeah, literally. That's what I found funny about this as well. A, a bit of a segue, but everyone was complaining about Harry Amas not playing in this game. Obviously, Toby Collier debuted at um, left back. I got my Toby Collier start finally. I'm just saying, <laughs> I finally got my Toby Collier start. But I think people need to realise that Harry Amas is 17 years old. He's, he's almost, he's around a year younger than Kobe Mainu was when Kobe Mainu came through and did it into the team. And I love Harry Amas, but he's not even... Rem- I, I wouldn't, say, ready, he's, I wouldn't say he's close to where Kobe Mainu was at that point. Co- Mainu was... Oh, this kid's ready for the first team. Like he can start twenty games in a row, like he did for United last season. Whereas Amas, he's a he's a little bit smaller. He's st- he's still really technical, but you don't need to rush him like that. Yeah, like exactly. Collier, three years. It didn't. It made sense to me to start Collier, and he didn't have an amazing game. He, he grew into the to it's the just, game in the second half. The end of the, I mean, he's but, our position as well, but yeah, it's yeah. Just minutes at the end. And, and he's also he's three years his senior. I think people like. Se- from 17 to 20, like that's a huge difference. I think a lot of these lower league teams, their top qualities are generally physical. Yeah, and, and like Ten-, Ten Hag mentioned it multiple times before the game, this is, Char- uh, this is not Charlton, we mentioned them a minute ago, this is Barnley- Barnsley's like, game, is their cup final? biggest game ever, like cup final away at Old Trafford. So I feel like that would have probably also been in Ten Hag's thoughts that like, Amask might get like overwhelmed with the pressure. Obviously, you can't predict that you're going to win seven 0 because he could have pot- potentially been on the bench and come up, come on. But yeah, that's uh, that's just something I was thinking last night because yeah, as always, no, I'll there's tell you not one, a- one thing. Right, Rashford's yeah, go second goal. So obviously, the first goal we spoke on the feet. The second goal that was all instinct. That was all instinct, and I always say that's that's you, when a finish like that is a mark of a striker being confident because if he's not confident. He takes a few touches, maybe yeah. stops, tries to measure it. Maybe he tries to round the keeper, do a bit too much. He that the pass from Garnacho as well. The way it passed, fantastic. And I look back just to distract a second. I look back at the pass he gave Ahmad, that people always like mm-hmm. get. Oh, Rashford gave Ahmad a bad. Garnacho gave Ahmad a bad pass in the FA Cup against Liverpool last season. The ball was perfect weight. Yeah, it was a brilliant pass. But Rashford, that one, that first time finish, that is an instinctive finish, and that's the mark of a confident striker. And a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago on the pod, you were literally, what what chance were we talking about? It where he passed it across goal to Garnacho, the yeah. the uh, open open goal miss kind of thing. But you were literally saying at that point, I want him to shoot that, even if he even if he misses, because you want someone like Rashford to be confident wanted, enough to wanted, take wanted it on. To, wanted to get the goal. He needed that goal. And, and we think, we're seeing him now after that goal against Southampton. Imagine he got a goal against Fulham. Yeah. Talking yeah. about a different season and for United entirely probably. It's moments like that. But I always say, look, if you want to look, if you want to understand a striker's mindset, look at how he's shooting a football, okay? And I said it with Hoyland a lot last season. When Hoyland was on that run where he was, just, everything he touched turned to goals. He was, stri- he was striking through that yeah. ball with pure conviction. He was not like rush. He was not like taking too long on his chances. He saw goal. He shot. Okay, and he hit through the ball really cleanly. When he was not as confident, when he was on the run where he was trying to get that goal, he was thinking about his chance a little bit more. And I say to like players I coach, I say, look, the more touches you take, the more decisions you give yourself to make. Yeah. Like just sometimes it is as simple as just get out of your feet and shoot. But that's just one thing I wanted to point out with Rashford. That second goal was a very instinctive, very confident. Goal on his yeah. weak foot as well. Yeah, have to mention and that. And you could, uh, the the angle wasn't like 
ideal. Like it probably is more of a shooting opportunity, but maybe if that was Rashford a few weeks ago, you could imagine him trying to cut back onto his stronger foot, trying to maybe pass it inside the box. I scored a bit of a similar goal with my weak foot seven aside a few weeks ago, actually, <laughs> I just remembered. You, Sif, Rashford, same, same person. Same <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's also, I mean, Xerxes, you were speaking about kind of striking with conviction. I, I remember Xerxes had a really good chance towards the end of the game where he almost like faked that he wasn't going to shoot and then got a really low drive. The keeper made a good save, but... Yeah, I mean, that that's kind of a similar kind of chance. But, yeah, I mean, 7-0, a lot of confidence. I mean, Crystal Palace <laughs> away, it's a much harder game. <laughs> it's a yeah. much harder game. And that's kind of... I feel like Crystal Palace is always... Crystal Palace away is one of the games I hate for Selhurst the Premier is very, League season. Very, I'll tell you as a Croydon boy, Selhurst is a very like hostile atmosphere. Yeah. They're not gonna they're not gonna play around. It's gonna be it's gonna be a difficult game. But moving on to maybe focusing on one player in particular, especially after his performance uh, yesterday, uh, Garnacho. I mean we all were I think a lot of United fans were expecting it after last season. He had a good season started basically the entire campaign yeah. and he got decent numbers i'd say numbers you expect of kind of an, a 19 year old kid starting his full first season yeah. but now he's already got he's i mean four goals and four 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 goals and assists came yesterday yeah. but he's got seven overall um this season he missed an open goal and he got very unfortunate with Dirt xerxes cut, so he'd, he'd be on nine in a alternate universe obviously that did not happen but seven's still re really good so far is are the things which we kind of was worried about Garnacho last season maybe a lack of conviction in certain areas uh, a little bit inconsistent although he was playing loads of football are those little bits potentially going to click this season are so. they already clicking I mean look I, I always put last season down to he he's not he made his United debut at 17 put it that way all right how many Manchester United players make their debut at 17? Not so many. Not, not many. So the fact he did that already is pretty ridiculous. And then he had developing... Too. I think almost how exciting he was in his first season, the expectations were too high for his second season. People then started saying, oh, this guy's actually not that good. He's, he's obviously got developing to do. He's a kid. But yeah. one thing I put it has a lot of his development down to core and hip strength. So he lacked power in his hips and his core strength and that affect so much that was actually affecting his touch a lot because his balance is then off so it's, it's a lot of that um affects his explosiveness people started this myth that he's not quick i'm just like please <laughs> yeah, well, what, fo what football are you watching firstly that he's not quick but i think his top speed very good i think it's those or even off the mark he's put it, it's the three to seven yard mark that kind of distance where he lacked a little bit of explosion. And that's almost like the most important yeah. for like a winger, really. And yeah, and that's where, that's where the hip kind of power comes into play. And where I was thinking, right, this summer, this guy just needs to hit plyometrics and do some sprinting mm. sessions and stuff. But he's looking rapid this season. The rest is another thing. Because he came close to starting like 40 games in a row last season. He completed quite a lot of those games. He's not a player that doesn't run a lot. Like, he's a player who... Sometimes high intensity. Yeah, he's very high intensity. Like he presses a lot, he'll run back a lot. Sometimes he needs to work, like pick his moments better, but he will always work. So he's pretty much up and down that line. So uh, this is a very hard working player playing almost 40 games straight. And then he's gone to the Copa America in the summer as well. Bear in mind, that's a lot of traveling to South America and back. He's come off the bench in three games this season, started yeah. now two. But he's he's looking like very good, and that like I mentioned before, that pass to Rashford, a sign of improvement because that weight of pass from him Perfect, was yeah. uh, fantastic. Even the pass to Rashford for the first goal was a really nice pass, and he came in touch with the left. I think it's important to mention actually that he played on the left. Yeah, because yeah. there's this idea come around. Oh, he can only play on the right, and whilst I believe right now he's better on the right because as a young player, is a very like direct player, but still a little bit rash in aspects of his game. Being on the right simplifies your game because of the picture you have as a right foot, right winger. It kind of almost makes your decisions for you. He's also instances. really good at those like kind of driving runs yeah. inside the pitch. Some, some obviously wingers now, I feel like if you're right footed, you just grow up on the left hand side. Yeah. So it's, it's quite nice that because not all right footed wingers are good at 
running inside under pressure I'm, with I'm, the ball. I'm a, I'm a fan of playing wingers on both sides, man. Give me real wingers, real wing players. And that's got Nacho. That's it, what he's like, but he played on the left and had a very good performance. Again, the opposition is not high, but it should just, again, show people to not speak so soon and to think, like, this is a kid, he is developing. I still personally see his long-term future on the left. I think right yeah. now, the right is good for him. His long-term future, his ceiling's higher on the left, but... The fact we have a guy who can play both sides is really helpful. Yeah, ma massively helpful. I think that throughout the season that will be helpful for him both starting games because he'll start more games because he's got that ability to play on both sides. Whereas really you look at um, Ahmad could potentially play centrally, but yeah. probably not on the left. Rashford, we've, we've seen him on the right. It doesn't really work. I mean, Anthony can cannot very, play on the left. Anthony can't play. Oh, well, I mean, to be fair, people have called for left back. but uh, uh, As long as he's on the pitch. But, <laughs> but to, yeah, so, God, I mean, for me, I think the m biggest reason this could be Garnacho's season and he could maybe break into the, like, 20 goals and assists in all comps and maybe do a few, uh, like, maybe a little bit better than that. I think it will be because of the fact that he can start on the bench as well. Yeah. Because, I mean, every I mean, bar Liverpool, you look every single game this season, he would have had a goal contribution if it were like I mean, like I said, didn't happen. But he he's always I I genuinely think Garnacho is one of the most impactful players in the Premier League off the bench 100%. because, 100%. like you said, he's not always. Not all the time has he got the better of his winger when they're almost like fully fit and they're both going against each other's start or against his fullback. Sorry, when they're both starting, sometimes he can kind of not win those battles. But when they're 60, 70 minutes in, the legs are starting to go a little bit, and he comes on. And because he's it's like, so a, he's like I, I think I've mentioned it before, he's almost like a goldfish. He, he he'll mess up one dribble, and the defender might go. Because for Rashford, if a, if a defender gets the better of Rashford a couple of times, he might try something different and he might try and do a few different things. Whereas Garnacho right now, if he goes at the defender, they tackle him. If they you, might if think... You, if, if you beat Garnacho 10 times, he'll come at you. And exactly, him. exactly. He he just keeps going. He's, re he's, he's United's most relentless player in that aspect where he will not... He, he thinks that he can get the beating of his fullback no matter what. And I, I think, think with him developing is very nice in that back to Rashford is that Rashford, like we said, is a confidence player. If Rashford then does have a little bit of a dip in form, it's nice to know Garnacho can just come in and start and you can plug him in because you know Rashford, like, Garnacho is not as reliant on confidence as Rashford is. He's just, in his head, he believes he's the best player on the pitch. Okay? Yeah, yeah. He's not necessarily the best player on the pitch, but in his head, he believes it. And that's like, I rate it, I have to say. Yeah. I rate it that he believes that. But. Yeah, I think that just helps Like if Rashford does. Hopefully Rashford will hit that consistency. And I do believe in Rashford. I think Rashford will have a very good season. He's about to hit a very good run of form, I think. But if Rashford does dip, do you always have that option of bringing in Garnacho? One thing I would like to see personally, okay, this might be coach brain talking a little bit. <laughs> I would like to see Garnacho start some games, maybe as that lesser cup of position centrally, whether that's as a 10 or as a centre forward. I would like to see him play in those positions just to round his development out yeah. a little bit, okay? Because like you said, okay, this game, that game against Barnsley, almost a bit of a training exercise in some ways once we get past a certain number of goals. But I think, yes, we have to win games, but you also, uh, it is good to test players and develop players in situations like this. I would like to see Garnacho play a few games as a striker. And I'll tell you what, his um, first goal was so instinctive. Rude van Nistelrooy would have been proud of that. I was, gonna, I, I was literally just going to go on to his goals because you've got two, brilliant, two different but both brilliant goals because, like you said, the first one is almost a striker's goal. Yeah. Like, he, he gets into the right... And also, he's been popping up in those positions in the last few games. He had one shot deflected from a Dallow cutback. And obviously his goal against um, Southampton was a from a cutback. Back. He's finding good spaces in the box, which, I mean, that's a nice development in his that's game. Awesome. But then you also look at his second goal. Obviously, Ericsson plays it through. And I don't know. I, I feel like last season he could have got maybe five to six more goals in ex situations exactly like that. Yeah. Or assists if he passed it across or whatever. But it's nice to see that he's kind of... He gets a nice goal from what you expect of a Garnacho, running in behind, really confident finish past the goalkeeper. 
but then also getting the nice gritty kind of almost like a, a striker's goal. Yeah. It, it's like getting both sides of the court. And like you That's said, you Rude Van Nistelrooy would have loved that finish especially. But yeah, that was such like it's just the way he sniffed it out and the little outside of the foot. It was a very like again instinctive finish. Like very you know he improvised, and I like to see that. So I think it's very good for Garnacho in his own development that he's had this game and two assists is very nice as well. So all around brilliant game for him. Yeah, brilliant, I mean, brilliant game for uh, him. Going on the other side though, I mean, we're saying I'm saying like is this his season? What? Do you think he still needs to improve? Like we, he's improving bits and pieces of his game. I know you mentioned the kind of um, like the whole core and yeah strength. core strength and how he can beat players over those short distances. But what else do you reckon there is yeah. for him to kind of? Because Garnacho does seem like this player where, and this is why loads of people are like really excited about him. A lot of fans because maybe because they've seen it in. Obviously, I'm not comparing abilities, but almost trajectories with Ronaldo where they had this like almost raw kid and then it just almost clicked and he yeah. becomes a world beater. People maybe not at the same, not at the same yeah, level. Not, I'm not, not saying level. at the same yeah. level, but do you feel like, it seems like Garnacho is going to be that player hopefully where things will click and he goes from like, okay, this kid's a good player, Manchester United quality to he's one of the best yeah, in think- the, at the club. In terms of what he needs to improve to do that, right now it is actually it's a little bit of consistency um, in terms of actions as well, like his touch. Like I say, the core and hip strength that impacts your touch it's because you're not fully managed. That, that's that's your base. So much in football comes down to your core and your hip strength. Um, ball striking a little bit as well. Sometimes he strikes it brilliantly. Sometimes doesn't quite connect as cleanly. That finish yesterday, I was a really clean finish. I really liked it. Um, this for the second goal yeah. that is. I think yeah, ball strike could improve if he could develop that, like those real powerful shots. Like, you know, the ones like Ronaldo was able to do, like that guy. He, I was watching a, uh, this whole Barclays men thing recently. Okay? Oh, when I, we're seeing, obviously, Ronaldo is not like a, a Barclays men, like that's for like these mid table legends. Yeah. But we, I was reminiscing on ball striking, and I watched these Ronaldo videos of him striking a ball, and I'm thinking, genuinely, how, like, Absolutely what? nuts, yeah. <laughs> it defies logic. Okay, sorry, that was a bit of a distraction, but, <laughs> but um, it's I'll, a fair one. You know, yeah, hundred percent. Rashford, like Rashford, he can strike through a ball with real power. Even Hoyland, when he's confident, strikes through it with that like, real power. I want to see Garner to be able to develop that ability to strike through the ball with real power, and a yeah. little bit, I would say, on temperament as well. Because right now, whilst his best strength in a lot of ways is that relentlessness we talked about, is also at times a weakness in that sometimes he almost does a bit too much now you look at Ahmad Diallo he's such a direct and positive player all right but he does not force things when they're not on around the box like there was one um instance where he got to the edge of the box and I'm thinking in that situation a certain other guy at the club would have shot and it would have gone into the stands and somehow didn't get a goal kick Ahmad did not shoot he didn't try forcing a pass behind the defense um he just kept it switched it across you know we kept the ball and we were able to sustain this pressure on Sam de Blag. I think we got like a good shot from it as well. We maybe want to, I don't remember the exact situation, but I remember we got something good out of it. And it's a situation like that where he's got the ball in a position where a lot of players who think, I want to go for it, will just shoot. But he had the calmness, that, that temperament to just He's got pass a good it. balance, and Yeah, he has that balance. And I want Garnacho to learn that balance, right? Because that is what a lot of elite players have. They just understand when to not force it. Yeah. Game like that game understanding with Ahmad like so good. Man. I mean, it's so funny how you think he's 22. He's probably he's only had one full season of professional football, Pretty much, yeah. and he's all and he's already this good. <laughs> like he was. I tell you, with Ahmad, he was always going to become good. Like you could see from the when when he first joined, when you watched clips of what he was like at Atalanta, you yeah. could tell this guy was going to be good. He just needed chances. He needed a chance. And yeah. He needed a bit of time just to develop that. Like what Sir Alex Ferguson um, said about Jesse Lingard almost and that, he's one of those players, when he comes to 25, 26, he'll be like a top footballer, but maybe not from that. Obviously, Ahmad's now 22. He's already getting into that group. Right now, he is one of the best performing right wingers in the Premier League. We just got, opinion. I think as well, though, like I said, it is his, first, it is his second, obviously, at the Sun. Season sun at, like, full season at this level. Yeah. There will be probably unless he's just like Kobe Maynard there pro- probably will be some moments throughout the season where 
he has inconsistencies. Even even and Manu had that at points. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit. So and he's and it's a it's probably a little bit of an easier position to play to do that. But yeah, I think Ahmad is unreal. But I think United fans, we all know what we're like. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get too yeah. There's it. some some people like to. Uh, overreact positively or negatively. So I feel like that. Ahmad will just go through those periods like Garnacho went through, like Rashford went well, through was back Ahmad, when I he think, was a teenager. I think what I like about Ahmad is that he'll, he'll go through periods where the output's down, definitely, but I think because of the kind of player he is and the quality he He'll always he has, be involved. He'll always like, give you something positive. Like he, you, you won't, it'll be rare that you see games where you're like, okay, he's just been bad. Like There'll be games where you think, oh, his finishing was off or his final ball was off. But he was still very involved and involved in a good way. Um, and I love, I love how much he takes responsibility as well, actually, Ahmad. That's one thing that's... About him. What's nice is that him and Garnacho are really like close friends as well. Yeah. And, and Hoyland. Yeah, them, yeah, yeah. Hoyland, Mainu. There's that photo of them after the FA Cup uh, final with the um, trophy. It's really like, nice to see these little relationships in the squad. Um, so Garnacho, yeah, I think it's going to be his season. I think Ahmad will have a fantastic season. Rashford will have a fantastic season. So like I said in my article um, yesterday, Ten Hag's got a really good headache across the squad now. Yeah, I mean, play, hope, fingers crossed, touch wood, that all these players stay fit. Um, but yeah, finally on Garnacho, quick, just just prediction. How many goals and assists? Premier League? Uh, Premier comps? League, I'm going to go... I'm going to say 15 in the Premier League, in the 15 to 20 range, but I say, I'm going to say about 15. Uh, I'd, all competitions, I'd say 23. Love it, love it. I, I, I'm hoping for a little, like, if he can get 10 goals, 10 assists in the Prem, that would be really good. Because I feel like assists-wise, like like we mentioned, like it seems that he's looking for players more. That that yeah. pa- that first pass to Rashford seemed like a Rashford pass. You know, the, the like, cross-field ball, that seemed like a bit of a Rashford pass. But yeah, hopefully more assists, hopefully more goals. I'll tell you, one of my favourite assists got Nacho Rizzi is just before we move on, all right? Yeah, go on. You know before Scott McTominay in the AFL Cup against Villa, the one where he came inside and Whipped like... It. That was really whipped. early as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really early. And you know, there's that like l- camera angle, which is from like foot level, like the players, you just, oh. you cut inside and you just see like the way it... I, I, that is like one of my favourite assists in recent that years. That is a very just, like, good assist. He cuts in and just, it's the whip on it is beautiful. Yeah, no, that from that, that angle as well. That was good. That, that the one yesterday was kind of like a B Tech version of that, like a little bit, a little bit closer. But yeah, I mean, final topic um, of the pod this week. I mean, Dallow started the game, and I, I and first of all, Dallow's. Uh, what is with these? What do they put in these Portuguese people's like lunch, dinner, breakfast? Because this guy's started almost like fifty games out of the last like 54 or 55 or some, uh, something along those lines and like 48 or 46 it's around those numbers have all been 90 minute games he didn't play 90 minutes yesterday but there's a good kind of conversation here because previously it was wan Saka and Dallow and we all knew that it was while, two vastly different rivals. yeah very different players and you kind of well when one started you got different things than the other different strengths, different weaknesses. Now Masraoui's come in, and I don't think anyone expected him to start this well. And also, after that Southampton game, I was a little bit concerned, especially concerned about his history, that he might have a little injury there, and he might be out for a few weeks. But he, he was fit, he came on against uh, Barnsley, and they both looked like probably two of the calmest players on the pitch. I mean, yeah. Dallow was just like chilling out on the, on the right on the right flank kind of doing what he wanted Masraoui came on and almost done the same some really nice close I mean I, I think everyone's noticed that he's really good in these tight spaces yeah. really good in the link up play I mean both players have probably been two of our better players to start this season yeah. Dallow was really good last season this is like you said mentioned Ten Hag's getting some good headaches is this probably the best headache he's got yeah, possibly. You know what's even like better is that they can both play at left back. Yeah. Given yeah. given our, our issues on that side, obviously Shaw's injuries, Malasia's not played football in way over a year. Amas is a kid. Like the fact they can both play left back is really nice. No, yeah. But yeah, this is a real headache. And you know what it is? Is because you know, like you will just get anything from them. Basically, it's like we were off camera for the pod. We were talking. You said how Dallo that. Like, 
You were saying, oh, he starts so many games, but it's like it's, he's very active. Like he's up and down the yeah, flank. Yeah, yeah. He comes inside. He drops into the back line and build up. Goes into before. He's everywhere. And I was, and I was just like, Masrawi just does all the same things. Like you can ask Masrawi to drop into the back line and build up and progress the ball. You can ask him to invert into midfield. You can ask him to even push higher up into the pockets and stuff. Because like you say, he's very good in tight space. And we've seen Dallo do that on a few occasions. You cannot. I um, noticed on Saturday on this, in the second half, Masrawi was overlapping and underlapping with Ahmad really well. We were creating those 2v1s and we were killing that Southampton fullback. We were yeah. proper, proper killing They him. were doing what they done to Dallow in the first half. Yeah, it was like, it was like this is our get back now. But yeah. um, it was Carl Walker Peters they were up against. But he was just, he can do everything you want in a fullback. And I've always said in fullbacks, okay, I don't necessarily care about specialists. I just want you to be able to do a bit of everything. That's my, in terms of my own personal preferences in football, that's my thing with fullbacks. In my opinion, fullbacks are very much like utility players. So no offense if you're a fullback watching <laughs> this, but like, Come on, we know you guys know you're not superstars, all right? So, <laughs> but to be fair, Ten Hag, I mean, the way that we're playing under Ten Hag, that seems like it's suit because I, I yeah. feel like I see Dallas, I lot. see the right back pop into midfield, pop in like like you mentioned, pop into the back three to help build up overlap. They, it seems that Ten Hag wants the right back and maybe the left back as well. It might happen yeah. more once we have got someone who's actually a left back there, but. He wants them to do a lot of different jobs. So yeah. it, both of these guys, I think, are really good. I'd say Dallow probably excels a little bit more at kind of the like the lot a little bit longer, like through the line passes. Yeah. He can really like he's really good on the half turn as oh, well. He genuinely turns like a midfielder. Yeah, sometimes. he's really good on the half turn. But I think Masrawi might not be as good of, at him in those situations. He's still pretty good, but he, I think I think Masrawi beats him in these tight kind of um, Rondo, like United yeah, are making Rondos. a lot of Rondo situations in games and I think he suits that perfectly. Can, and I, can I just say on the Rondo point, okay, <laughs> yeah, go can, on. I, can I just say it was it was back in February I wrote an article on this. I said in February it's an important thing and now people are realising it so... <laughs> Mbappe. But um, yeah, I mean, both are good but I mean, a fit Luke Shaw and if he is a fit Luke Shaw, yeah. and potentially Malassia coming back, if we get an actual left back back fit, obviously both of these guys can't start. Yeah. So, is that just, is that, I mean, it is a good problem, but a you, very good problem. I think before the season started, everyone was expecting it to be like, Dallow 100% starter, and Masrawi might come in for like, um, cup games, good rotation player, to, so then Dallow doesn't start 50 games in a row. Is it going to be like that, or do you reckon it will be a lot more kind of competitive? I have to say, competitive? I love both players. Right now, I'm actually edging towards Masrawi as the starter. I'm a really big fan of Dallo, and I've been a really big fan of Dallo for years. I've always thought he's very underrated by a lot of United fans, but right now, what Masrawi is doing is so good. And I think what Masrawi has slightly over Dallo right now is understanding like, those runs and stuff, like when to make them, uh, where to be positioned here and there. So He's re he what I didn't expect, he's been quite good defensively covering the oh, back he's been post. Fantastic. I, his I think his awareness, uh, that's one thing I'll say, his awareness, like, compared to wan Bissaka and then <laughs> and, Dallow as well. Yeah, I mean, that's something that wan Bissaka and Dallo have both been kind of hit with yeah. over the past few years is the defending of the back post. And he seems to do it really well, well, so far. Very aware. But, so, you're saying kind of, <laughs> who knows when Luke Shaw's back? Because it feels like it's just going to get put back every now and then. And I mean, in the meantime, hopefully both of these guys stay fit because at the moment- it's, and, it's, They're doing well. And Dallow's started, so I mean, he looks much better on the right. He came, he, I mean, he moved over to the right late on against Southampton and also started the there yesterday. Um, Garnacho on the right. He, he just, Dallow does look more comfortable, but he also still is performing from the left. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's had a bad half of football against Southampton where, but, their entire tactic. They seem to go, oh, the, we can just easily overload this um, our right hand yeah, side. We, we changed our pressing uh, scheme slightly in the first half. It didn't work. We reverted back in the second half, and that you know it was a good change to make. But yeah, I'd say with that Tyler Dibbling kid is fantastic. But he way. did look class. Um, I saw someone say um, when when Southampton get relegated, bring it to the <laughs> I saw I saw someone say like he was putting in a performance which would make Fergie buy him. 
if he was still like if he was still you manager. Know, like you know, you know, the funny thing is he can also play like midfield and stuff. So he looks good. Like I think if Southampton do get and they look like relegation favourites. As much yeah. as I hate to say it, I think that I love the team. I like Russell Martin as a manager a lot. I think his style is very um, suited to top teams. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. But Tyler Dibbling, man. You're, I mean, we, you're, we, you're, we, you're on my list, okay? We can get uh, ja- uh, Jared Brantfrey and him for combined twenty million. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, go for it, please. But, but, please. Um, but yeah, I mean, this competition is good, but overall, I mean, we touched on it um, earlier on in the pod, but we do seem to be. I, I mean, we still got players out as well, which is positive because. Right now, the depth seems decent, okay? And then you've got, hopefully, Luke Shaw, hopefully, Malassia, hopefully, um, Rasmus Hoyland, Mason Mount's making an early... Um, yeah, he's come back come, to the... He's came lot. back to the first-team training, which I think is really nice because I think that injury was a mass... Like, it's just a, like... It was a big hit. Pu- like a punch in your gut kind of thing. Like, he clearly was working really hard to try and start this next season. And he was playing quite well as well, to yeah. be honest. So, so like... Squad depth. Where are we at? Like, are we in a good position? It seems it's quite lot, good. It's a lot and Ten Hag did did rotate, which a lot of people didn't expect him to. Yeah, yeah. The injuries, and he's he's rotated because he now feels comfortable. Like a lot of these players have trained under him for a time now, and he feels comfortable that they can exact his demands. But that's it's even the fact that Toby Collier played at left back, and we know he can do it now, is a positive sign. So. It looked like Brandon Williams was there. So, I was thinking that during the game. I was like, oh, yeah, blonde, when he, when he blonde came, academy, really like he's aggressive. Got that same, he's got that same like hair as him, but it's... Um, I, I actually remember when he came in against Liverpool, I had to do a double take for a second. I was like, what, was Brandon Williams back? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. But, um, I think, yeah, so we, let's go through the squad. So you've got Onan, obviously, in goal. Bayende played, uh, you know... They didn't really get tested. He looked quite good on the ball. Yeah, solid. You can do the job. Right back, you've got Masrawi and Dalo. Left back, Dalo and Masrawi can both play there. Shaw's the main star there. Malassia, we have no idea how he'll come back. But I mean, Ten Hag yeah. recently, like, the way Ten Hag spoke about it, it seemed like it was, like, yeah. it didn't seem like it was, like, a few months away. Yeah. It seemed like the way he was speaking, it could be a month. Yeah, and and, and I, then he... I hope to see him back because it is not nice for a footballer to be out for so long. I did actually think he was quite underrated in his first season yeah. as well. Like, he was a solid player. Centre back, you've got Matthias De Ligt and uh, Lissandro Martinez, your like main two. Lenny now. Euro as well. I, Lenny Euro coming back in about a month. I feel like we're almost forgetting he plays because yeah. of that injury, but that will be a really good Interesting boost one. as well. I think the fact De Ligt and Euro can play on both sides of the defence as well is really nice, but I'm, I'm looking forward to Euro. I still think De Ligt and Licha are the starters. Yeah, yeah. But that's because, again, Euro is 18, you've got to let him develop, but I think it'll, that's a really nice one. Maguire, we know, can, he can come in and do a job if needed. Uh, Better Cass- than a lot of people think, yeah. I think, as well. Yeah, Johnny Evans is there. Johnny Evans, anybody? What a boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's good to have him around because he's a leader and he's yeah. a, clearly a very positive presence in the squad. And even, like, I know he's not the most popular, but Casemiro got on like, the pre assist from centre-back on the weekend. Yeah, that like, was a good pass can. as well. We're, we're creating a lot of those... Uh, I mean, it's only been a few games this season, but I feel like we're creating a lot more cut-back opportunities, which feels nice, because that year, last season, it felt like that was only happening against us, and we kind of forgot how to do it. The role of the fullback should put... I think when Shaw comes back, yeah, but there were so many situations against Southampton where we were breaking, but there was just no natural whip from the yeah. left. And I'm thinking... Like, I look even look back at uh, Hoyland's goal against Wolves last season, where that you know Rashford had the ball, Shaw made the overlap, Rashford played the short cut across the yeah. box, and Hoyland just like scrambled. He just, it he just wanted yeah, yeah. the goal. Like, he was like, "I want this goal. You're not stopping me." But uh, it's like that. Just having that width on the left is going to make such a difference. Because like, I'll put it this way, and I've said this so many times about how an actual left back, who's a natural left hand player, helps. Because Dallas always going to come back inside like say he's a right back who can do a very good job at left back for a right back but he is a right back at the end of the day he's always going to look to come inside the pitch it's not his natural instinct to go outside Shaw's natural instinct will always be to go outside and also I spoke a few weeks ago about how Ten Hag wants his full back and his winger to start on opposite line so you then have Rashford Rashford will start wide and come inside and a, a full back might start narrow but they will go outside with Shaw it's natural to run outside and we've seen that connection yeah. he has with Rashford but we've got like more Depth in the fullback positions and at centre back. Um, I mean, even worst case scenario, if Lissandro gets injured and Ten Hag wants a left footer, Shaw's shown he can play at centre back. In midfield now, we've got Casemiro, Ugarte's getting up to speed a bit more. Um, 
Toby Collier will be in and around. You think potentially later on in the season as well, Siku well, Kono might be involved, depending yeah. on how quickly he let's, adapts. Let's see. I mean, he's been named in the first team squad, so yeah. let's let's see how he gets on. I mean, don't want to rush the kid, of course. Yeah. Let's see obviously, I, I mean, we'll see how he... Hopefully, if like the games are shown, because obviously that that's a bit of a thing at the moment. Yeah. I think there's we need to get that <laughs> Ratcliffe has got Ratcliffe's got rid of the um, the cameraman for the under 21s yeah. games. But if if hopefully we can have a have a look at and see him see for the see youth team, see how he kind of looks right now. And if not, we're gonna have to know what the devil trip up to uh, up north. Yeah, we'll but go oh watch the games in first. Yeah, we'll have to go to Lee Sports Village though, where they play absolute yeah, nightmare playing, to get um, to, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sukuno, so we've got Menu up in front, the uh, up front as well. There's like Hoyland comes back, and Hoyland. you've got good options across the you board. Hoyland there. and Zerks use your main strikers. Rafford can play as a striker. As I've said, in, so in a couple games season, I would like to see Garnacho start centrally just for his own development. Ahmad, I think I'm sure he's played as a false. I think he's at Wolves game, was it? He played as a false nine. Yeah, when he was a few years yeah. ago. So he, we know he can play centrally. Um, there is. Options. Um, I'd like. Right. I'd like to see. Garnacho can play both wings. Rashford on the left. Yeah, I'd. I'd like There's to depth. see Ahmad start centrally in a couple games as well. when Garnacho starts on the right. Yeah. Because I think getting Ahmad to stay in the team while Garnacho also. I mean, you don't want to overplay him at the same time, but I think that would be a nice thing to test, maybe yeah. against in the cups or something. Something like that. But I mean, yeah, uh, squad depth of. Across the pitch, I mean, compared to last season, obviously injuries were mental, but it felt like every t every game week it felt like you were looking at the bench and you were going, "Who can come on?" Yeah, who who's making an impact here? Whereas now, there's a nice problem where in forward areas it's quite nice once Hoyland's back. In midfield areas, you've got a fair bit of depth there. Hopefully, Collier even, does come even on. Even Ericsson, um, like. In the number He's, ten, he was fantastic. Get him in the number he, he ten. He was fantastic against Southampton. Now, a lot of teams have a bit more physicality and intensity about them. He might not be able to. You got to pick and choose for yeah. Ericsson. Don't when you, I in think. the right games, you know that he will give you a fantastic performance with the ball. Yeah. So he, there's, he, uh, there's just there's 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 more depth. I feel like we've got a strong like, set of like 15, 16 players who we can rely on a little bit more. And now it's just about I just said, and this is why I wasn't panicking after Liverpool. Where I said I want to see more time because we've had a lot of changes. The squad's changed a bit. Um, the coaches have changed. Obviously, Ruud van Nistelrooy's come in. This yeah. is Rene Hecke. So some of the structures have changed a little bit. It's a little bit of time just getting settled. But I would like to see how we settle over the next few weeks. And it's, 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 a, pos it's a positive sign so far. Um, Southampton, first half, obviously not great, but we made a little change. Second half was very good. Uh, Barn it's Barnsley, but like you say, it's how often do we score seven goals? Yeah, yeah. The last time we won a game, seven nil scoreline was funny enough against Barnsley in 1997. But in terms of recent years, there was the nine nil against Southampton. We've not had many games where we've won by like four or five goals or more. Under Ten Hag, the highest win we've ever had has been a three goal difference. Yeah, and then and then that allows, if you get into your five, sixes and sevens, that allows you to then not bring on players or, yeah. or like bring Bruno, on players Fernand pad. Bruno Fernandes came on in that game and played 30 minutes of football, but it was like a 30 minute training session. Like you kind of mentioned, once you go against these, like a lower league side, once you hit the three to four, you're almost doing training drills, like you're trying to do what you do in training. And like that 30 minutes for Bruno wouldn't have done anything for him, I, especially Bruno. I mean, no. he, he probably needed the minutes just so then it wasn't like a foreign concept for him to not play. Too bored. <laughs> yeah. but, like. but I mean, yeah, like you said, big result helps because, and hopefully United can do it more in the Premier League where you, you don't have to be 7-0 up, but if you're maybe... 3 0 up, go like we were against Southampton, going into the final 15, 20 minutes of the game. You can then bring Maynu off, you can then bring Ahmad off if he needs and to. One thing against Southampton, we generally could have scored like five or six. Yeah, yeah. That second half, the number of missed chances, okay. Xerxes, I know, I know everyone was happy with the performance he was getting on my nose. <laughs> yeah. was there was two really good chances, yeah. weren't there, for him. But I mean, uh, we'll just finally go back to these two first. So, I mean, Masrawi starts like once Shaw's back is is Masrawi's the starter. I feel like it, it. 
I feel like United's change. depth has been so poor in recent years that I just don't want either of them to be on the bench. We, we, don't, we don't know how to act. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait, that guy's too good to be on the bench. But, I mean, as well, Masraoui has had those injury problems, like we mentioned. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it's perfect that... Like, if he had to do what Dallow's done, like play he's, 30 he's games gone. in a row, he'd probably, like, break down. Well, I think it's, it's then nice that we, you can play Masraoui one game, Dallow one game, and it keeps, it keeps them both on their toes, but it keeps Masraoui fresh, it keeps Dallow fresh... And you don't worry too much about it. Yeah, and and all, yeah, like because like we mentioned at the start, it's not like you're changing everything when one subs in for the other. They can almost do the exact same role with a few different tweaks. But uh, yeah, to finish off, we'll we'll kind of have a quick preview. I mean, Southampton, uh, not Southampton, Palace. Crystal Palace away. I mean, what are you expecting? What are you I'm expecting? I'm expecting us to win, though. I'm I, us to win, I'll be honest. We've, we've had a 3-0 win in the league, OK, to boost confidence. We've had a 7-0 win. I don't care if it's a league one. We've had a 7-0 win to boost confidence, OK? So we should be going out there and being ruthless now and wanting to take opportunities. Palace have not started the season in a great way. They've got yeah. a couple of points. That they got a draw against Chelsea, I think. They got their draw in their last game. They came back from 2-0 down. But they've not had the great starts to the season, and we've got like Rashford's. Rashford's like he's hitting form. Ahmad's playing how he is. Garnacho's hitting form. Players are starting to come back. Fitness is starting to improve. Match rhythm. People are starting to get familiar with ideas. So I ex- I'm gonna say a three-one win. I like that, and it is probably our biggest test because you do you look at Southampton. They they're the Premier League new boys that. They, like you said, they're probably favourites for relegation. So, 3-0 win, nice, but it's not like a statement. 7-0 win, it's a bit of a statement, but it is against Barnsley. But you can't control who you play against. I think, a, a, like I said, away at Crystal Palace is a really difficult Premier League game. And if we, if we go there and put in an actual performance and get the result, I feel like that's that could be the result which almost brings proper confidence like you like, like United are getting individual players are getting confidence through getting goals assists obviously all that but I think for the team to go okay we started the season a little bit ropey but now three wins in a row away at Crystal Palace is a good win and then obviously you've got a few more difficult, more games. difficult games coming in I think Spurs and Villa um in the Europa League, I think we're playing Ten Hag's old team which will be interesting assess 20 uh, rather than attract his old team Oh, yeah. What, what, what was it's 20? Twi- he 20 played at 20, didn't he? I yeah, think he did. Yeah, I think he might have to be fair. Yeah, but but yeah, we're, we're going to a Dutch side, so we'll probably like sign one yeah, of their up-and-coming players or something. He'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll, think, he'll think back to when he was at Ajax and think, right, time to be ruthless to turn him over. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, for Palace, I, I'm not, I don't think it'll be like a, an easy win. I think the performance will be decent and I think we'll win 2-1. Because I think I think if you go away from Palace and it's like more than a one goal score line, then you've done like absolutely like really yeah, well. Definitely. So I think I think two one sounds like realistic. I try to see us be a bit like ruthless now. We've had that seven nil. We scored three goals against Hampton and we could have scored more. I want to see ruthlessness. Yeah, yeah. From the from the forward. I don't think we'll get as many chances as we did against Southampton, but I want to see us be ruthless with the chances we do get. Yeah, hundred percent. None, no like open goal misses, but. I mean, Yusuf, thank you for joining me again. Thank you um, for having me. It's, it's been a very good pod. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like the video below if you liked it. And uh, yeah, let us know. Well, everyone liked it. Come on, let's, let's yeah, just say if yeah. you liked I mean, it. Everyone's you, liked the video. Yusuf's here, so. Everyone's liked the video. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, big up, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.